Hey everybody, this is Birch. I've uh, I, I don't listen to the I've been listening to the radio more since I came to Texas, and I don't know if it's I'm not sure why. Uh, I'll be honest because it's not better here. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but it, it dawned on me this morning as I'm uh, getting ready to record this video and, and I'm listening that uh, and, and this isn't one of those you know the music today sucks because it it doesn't. There's a lot of really good artists out there and, and some good quality stuff, but um, it does crack me up a little bit that we you know 20, 30, 50 years ago. Um, you had bands out there who were like, I like fish and, and I'm not holding that up as an amazing band, but, uh, you have, you have bands like fish that they're, they're out there going, you know, Hey, you're going to have to get stoned and high to even understand what we're talking about. Um, or, you know, Led Zeppelin is like, you get a whole different experience if you're, if you're super stoned. Um, and then today, uh, the song that was playing, it's like, if you're feeling down, I'll help you out, baby. And that's like, and then they repeat that three times and that's it. It's like the complexity of the message has, uh, has been watered down a little bit. I, uh, and maybe you need to be high to endure it now. I don't know. Uh, but, it, but anyway, uh, one of those, one of those things, um, not a, not a very intelligent observation just is, uh, it is what it is. Um, so I have this question as well. So if you're, uh, uh wrote in with a question that I've also had, and I know Joe's also had, uh, we've talked about this uh, on the air before, uh, but uh, it says, Hello, Perch. In the past 20-odd years, Tom Brevoort has produced some highly acclaimed runs as an editor, such as Bougiac's Avengers, Wade's Fantastic Four, Brubaker's Captain America, Hickman's Fantastic Four, and Avengers. Even though I didn't care for it personally, one cannot deny the impact that Miller's Civil War had on Marvel's overall sales. Additionally, Bendis' new Avengers book was a top-selling title in all comics for a while, pretty long while, during the mid-2000s. I think this establishes that Brevoort knew what he was doing during that time period. I, I think that's safe to say. Look, you can like or dislike several of those comics, but you cannot deny that they sold big numbers, did well, built on each other. This was back in a time, and I know this is going to sound really, really crazy if you're newer to comics, but once upon a time, they'd do an event... And then books that would spin out of that event would be huge sellers. You know, they, people are actually excited to see these stories continue. When Civil War hit, uh, the dynamic, I mean, they were able to make another Avengers title out of it and sell really well with it. And this is just, uh, you know, it, it used to be true. Uh, but anyway... However, the mail continues, since Secret Wars, Brevoort seems to have completely lost the plot. I'm, getting, I'm, I'm censoring the mail slightly because I'm trying to do better. I'm, I'm trying to do better for you, for the children. Uh, Civil War II was a total failure, and Aaron's run on Avengers was not captured by the imagination of comic fans, to say the least. Yeah, you're fucking right. Oop, sorry, I just, just, just broke my own rule. Slot's Fantastic Four hasn't been a big success either, with his run barely selling better than the Matt Fraction and James Robinson runs. Um, actually, uh, from, from what you can tell, uh, sold better at the beginning and then sold worse toward the end, which is uh, tough to, to wrap your head around. Um, now that Ryan North is the new FF writer, I highly doubt this will change, uh, especially after rewatching your sales analysis on the unsellable Squirrel Girl. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's... Um, yeah, I agree. I would agree. My question to you is, what do you think happened to Brevoort's ability to make competent creative decisions? Has he grown apathetic in his old age? Are there forces behind the scenes at Marvel that we don't know about? Perhaps Joe Quesada and Axel Onzo are better EICs than they get credit for. Maybe I'm just being overly pessimistic and Norse Fantastic Four will be as good as John Burns. <laughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> oh, shit, you shouldn't do that to me. Early morning, I'll start coughing. Um, okay, uh, so what happened? Yeah, no, there is a change. Look, and, and the interesting part is that you you have to wonder about if you're a comic fan is that you know Brevoort uh, carried with him. I mean, it used to be a bit. It was kind of a arrogant, you know, a, annoying bit. Uh, but he used to do a bit at cons where it was like, I know more about Marvel than you do. I, I'm is like Stump Tom, and uh, and and you read comics that are like just outright bananas with the continuity now. And you're going, what happened? What, what did you, what, what happened to you? You used to run a much tighter ship and you used to have more of an eye for how to properly lead up and structure these events and get the tie-ins out all these different pieces. You, you used to do better. 
So I think it is a combination of things. Uh, if, 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 my personal opinion. Now, where I want to give you the uh, what, cite your sources. So where, what are my sources for my opinions? What, what are the things that have influenced me? So I'm, as I said, I know a few people who work in the Marvel office. And I know more people who work for Marvel tangentially, meaning they, they help with publishing, they help with marketing, they help with some of the other groups uh, within Marvel and ultimately Disney Press and Disney and so on. And uh, the, the consistent comment that I've got enough times that it, it, feels, uh, it feels like a, a wider held belief. Is it true? Don't know. But this is a wider held belief for people in the office is that uh, Brevoort is far more checked out than he used to be. Still loves Marvel. Just, you know, his presence has, has dipped. And I think he, you know, what, what do I glean from that? I, I mean, apathetic, sure. Or just, uh, you know, needs a, needs a long vacation, maybe one that doesn't end. Um, he, you know, it could be a number of things there, but uh, it, he, his, the passion seems gone, or at least severely, severely uh, stunted is, the, is the, the, how it looks. But I don't think you put this all on Brevoort. I do think leadership is a cause. I think Joe Casada helped do a number of things in the early 2000s that were very helpful and powerful for Marvel, helped gain them a lot of share. And I think that he also lost the plot. He also became, you know, and that was a definite one, whereas the movies went on, I think he made a big play to, you know, help with the movies and to be a subject matter expert. And, and that fell on its absolute face. And then he became less involved, and and I think from that time period on, he became disillusioned, or at least took his foot off the gas. He just didn't work as hard. Um, Axel Lonzo, I know a lot of people, of uh, probably a lot of viewers here, uh, hate the guy. I think Axel Lonzo was more, far more powerful, uh, positive force for Marvel than people give him credit for. I'm not saying amazing, you know. He was involved in those uh, that Trouble comic, I believe, as well. So you can't. He can't, uh, you can't, you can't, you know, he's, he's not off the hook. Uh, but I think he, he takes the blame for a lot of things that were happening at Marvel at the time that I think were outside of his control. And uh, I think he, he did run, I, I don't know, people have described Axel Alonso as Jim Shooter, light, 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 light. You know, so um, he had some of the same qualities, you know, didn't have anywhere close to the same kind of maniacal vision for how you, you put out a line. Um, and kind of the aggressiveness of how you do that. So, you know, I, I think that CB is far less of an engaged uh, exec. I think he is, you know, his engagement kind of really, you know, the biggest passion moments come out when trying to find a, you know, a new place to that, that will deliver takeout. Um, that's that's not a shot at <laughs> it's not a shot at uh, his weight. That is uh, a shot at the fact that he never shuts up about food. Uh, but I, I think that the environment around Marvel as a whole grew a lot less focused. I think that, you know, they succumbed to the idea that the movies were going to be the thing that people would always remember first. I think that they thought they'd have more involvement in that world, and it turned out they didn't. And I, th I just overall, I think it, it lowered the morale and spirit uh, to, do, to do amazing work. I think you see that in a lot of the comics. I think that's that Brevoort is is also infected with this to some extent. There's a phenomenon going on in the US right now called quiet quitting. And it's where people just uh, they still go to work, they don't quit. They just do less. You know, you go to get coffee and instead of a five minute break, you're like, I'm gonna sit here for a while and just hang out. There's this there's some um, there's a report from Starbucks. There's a lot of Starbucks that, that we are put into um, corporations inside of big buildings and it's technically not starbucks it's like uh atlas or sedexa or you know companies like that um and they um they they basically serve starbucks but they're not really starbucks but it looks like starbucks anyway this this uh thing i saw it on linkedin of all places uh they're saying that uh you know the they've noticed even with covid and the, the article is written as though it was a commentary on covid but i think it was actually telling a different story it said that the uh, the lounge area in the coffee place, you know, the, the tables around where you get the coffee, are are packed. They're packed all the time, and uh, they you know it they they didn't they built these little shops and suddenly they're they're full, uh, full of workers. And I think that that's I think the indicator of people are like wow with COVID I'm you know it's clear people are not worried about COVID anymore. 
I, I think that's that's a conclusion. But I think the more interesting conclusion is people are just they're they're quietly quitting. They're they're going and they're they're easing up. And I think that's the the issue with Marvel. And I think it's several people. But I, I you know, it is worth crediting Tom Brevoort for being on top of things and driving some pretty amazing comics for a long period of time. He he did it. He's got a lot under his belt that you know, did, that's not a dick joke, that did amazing work, amazing business for Marvel. And uh, I, I, you know, if, if we're getting to the end of his career and just logistically time-wise, we have to be, um, it, it's a shame that he can't go out with a bang uh, rather than what feels like a whimper. And for a lot of people retiring, leaving Marvel here now over the, like, you know, Buckley and others who are uh, on their way out, um, it, it feels like, I don't know. It just, it, I always want to go out on top. I want to go out, uh, you know, I, I, I ship some amazing piece of software or I uh, give a good speech or, you know, if the, the last year of the comic shop is, is just bonkers business, does really, really well. Um, I introduce some new kind of retail concept. I mean, you, you want to go out on a high note. And I think, you know, it, it, it seems unlikely that that's going to be the story for, for a number of people leaving Marvel in the, in the near future. But anyway, thank you very much for the question. Um, let me know your thoughts. Is this, uh, what, what do you think? What's causing this? What is the reason? Because I think even if you, it's, it's, it's not subjective. I think objectively, we can say some of this stuff. You can still say subjectively, hey, I like a lot of these stories. They're good and everything else. But objectively, you can look at the actual sales numbers. You can look at the amount of new titles that actually pick up and go and, and do big business. You can look at the uh, amount of work that, you know, gets translated to massive trade sales on Amazon. You can look, you know, objectively at the outcome. And it's, uh, I mean, not that great. So even if you like the stories, you, 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 you'd, be, uh, you'd be kidding yourself if you claim that everything was going wonderfully and, and life is going great. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. I usually forget to say that, mostly because I don't care. And thanks for the, the, the like and subscribe, not the, not the rest of the stuff. I care about your opinions, as long as they're good. And, uh, and I definitely care uh, about, uh, about you, and thank you for listening. It's genuine.